teachers, I want to say I'm going to do my best to record short snippets here and might be repetitive at the beginning, but want you to know that this is going to be my attempt to record several different videos at separate links and then try and put them all together in one video if you just want to watch them all at the same time. My goal is to approach Google Classroom and Zoom which are our two platforms that we've been asked to just start there. Don't try and do everything else. Uh, and then what are some nuances that I can help you with? So let's start with how do you get Google Classroom going? Is if you go to your browser, probably most of you are on Safari, uh, but I'm going to go through Firefox and type Google Classroom and the internet is slow for everybody so uh, it's one of the top links make sure uh, you click the right one and it's probably gonna bring up one of my uh, Google Classrooms here so here's a bunch of them that I have up and uh, what you have what everybody has is this plus button up in the corner and that's where you click plus and click create a class and you're gonna name it I tend to name mine uh, by uh, what it's on the schedule and then the section is what block so this would be for uh, English 4 I suppose and the section would be let's say it's block seven and the room is my room I don't have to put that on there and I'll just hit create as it creates this it's going to generate its own code and that's right up here when I click on this little box and it blows up this code this is the code that the kids need in order to log in and get to your content. We'll stop there. If I can click it. All right, next. Oh, lots of emails coming in. Next thing we need to do is uh, communicate with your class. How do you get this information out to them? Uh, What I would say is click on classwork and uh, you want to create a, a, some assignment or a quiz and I would use uh, material and I would start with clicking on material and saying uh, uh, calling it a, a brave new world and I uh, want to give some of my I usually put my objectives into this spot so um, those are my I will statements I will uh, open the new schedule I will uh, evaluate zoom qualities I don't know I'm just making this up as I go and over here on the right I want to assign it to however many classes I have if you created a bunch of classes you can click on these and give it to all these students then uh, this is important here is to create a topic so let's call it an introduction and I'm gonna hit post what that topic does is it gives you a section over here and so if we have seven weeks I would say week one of continuous learning call it week one week two and have an idea of hey I'm gonna have seven weeks or are you thinking actual lessons that are you got 14 lessons this is what I would encourage you to, to put so I'm gonna stop I'm getting along gotta click stop okay so we've created a topic 
and we've given out some material, you're probably thinking, how do I get all these students uh, to me? So I put classwork under classwork, or your stream, it puts it in order of how you've posted. But how do I get this information to all of my students? And if I click on that, I can select it and hit Command C. And I want to create a new uh, email. And I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to hit Command V here. And I know I can build an email with that as the topic or that is the uh, information I want to give and build my email around it. But how do I get that to everybody? And that depends on your ability to get into uh, Power Teacher and try not to show who these people are. Um, but you go to your Power Teacher Pro and on class, for whatever class is my fifth block, English Comp, I click on class and I want to email the class. And so I click on you can either click on parent or guardian and all of them and if you scroll down you click on build list and it'll give you everybody all those emails that we already have in one spot and then I write two finger click command or copy and then I go back to that email I was building I hit command V and it'll put all the emails in that we have. I'm trying not to give you guys information and hopefully there's no bad emails there. I don't think there is. Um, appreciate Doc and all of his work. Uh, so that's how you can get this classroom to all of your students and make sure they get this. You'll have to do that for each individual class if you haven't already set up a Google Classroom. I'm got it. All right. It might seem really easy. Uh, might just everything might seem like you get it now, but I just wanted to show you a few more tricks uh, that if I wanted to create a assignment, this is where uh, it gives them a due date. Like before, I gave you material. That's just information for them. That's probably where I'll put my YouTube videos, and I'll show you how to drag that in a little bit. But an assignment is going to ask you for a little bit more information. How many points are you going to make it? We haven't fully decided about all the grading points and uh, stuff like that. You're assuming it's for all students. You're going to assume you're going to give it to all these people if you want to click on them all. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, the due dates are going to be important to put on here for you and for them. When are you going to assume expect homework to be done? And we're probably having that discussion but if you click on here, it usually populates 48 hours from now, or 24 hours from now. And we're usually on block scheduling, so you need to move it to the next day. Uh, let's say maybe it's office hour day, and so we're gonna everything's due on Friday. I doubt we'll do that. And the time is important, so I usually put at the end of the day at 11:59 when my kids are all hanging out. Uh, rubric, good place to put that here. Uh, and you want to be able to evaluate. I, you know what? I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Ignore that. Sorry. We won't talk about that right now. Um, I have to create the assignment first. So, uh, cars. Um, evaluating the movie Cars and its commentary on. Uh, modern times whatever I'm going to add you can add something from Google Drive uh, you can add a link that you want them to go to uh, you can uh, and you would need to know what that link is and you could uh, you know this is my old web page I haven't used in a while I can hit come over here and hit command C or two finger click and click copy oh I changed it to power school and I can put that on there and I click add link and this will be in the assignment. So I probably better delete that. I don't want to send it there. Um, I can add a YouTube file and you need to, you can go searching on YouTube or if you already know the URL, you copy and paste it into here. 
and it will generate a YouTube file and they can watch it, but you do need to check and make sure that it's been approved by USD320, and you can approve that. We'll look at that next. All right, next I want to uh, add a video. We're going to be doing a lot of this, all right? I personally am going to be doing a lot of uh, pre-video so that I can tell that my students are kind of flexible, um, or maybe you just have videos you want them to watch, and there's a few ways to do that. And I'm going to do both in this video. One is you can add a YouTube link. And you should already have it pulled up before you're done. I've got Senior Interview Day here. And I'm going to use Command-C or you can two-finger click and copy. And then you got to be able to toggle back and forth. And then I can go to URL and click Command-V. Or I could right click paste one or the other and click add. Can't be interrupted. Or another way to add video, especially because we're going to be dropping a lot and you may not be YouTube people, you can film uh, your class uh, using Zoom. I'm using QuickTime right now just because it's a little bit higher quality. And uh, I'm going to bring up my Google Drive and show that if I am saving my files here, that I can then take that, click on it, and I can drag it over onto my drive. And it's going to show you uh, down here in the corner that it's going to, depending on your upload speed, how long it's going to take. These are two minute videos. So it's going to take about a minute and a half for my, my speed. So when I go to my Google Classroom, I can add a file and I go to Google Drive. And Google Drive is going to show me all of my recent things. So if I'm doing this all about the same time, here's the one that I uploaded earlier, not waiting for the one that's down here. I just did that to show you. And I just take that and I click Add. And now it is uh, bringing that up. And I want to click Assign. Oh, do I have a topic? I don't have a topic. So let's create a new one just so you can see what that's like. I'm just going to call this Lesson 1. I had Introduction before. This is Lesson 1. So now it's populating it. And so now under Stream, it's just going to pop them all up. But for Classwork, it's going to show Lesson 1 and Introduction. And if I click on Introduction, it's going to just do Introduction. If I go to Lesson 1, it's going to just do Lesson 1 so the kids can organize it on the left. And if I want all the topics, I can. I click on cars, here's all these videos, and now we're going to break the fourth wall by clicking on my class code email movie, and it's telling me to check back later because uh, I haven't finalized it yet. We'll talk about finalizing that in a little bit. All right. Well, uh, now that our video is processed, it takes about three minutes for it to do so. Uh, we double click on here and now my video is going to pop up so I just got a little excited I thought I had had it uploaded long enough uh, and you can also the student can also come up here and click download uh, in order to download the video to their computer if they don't have time to watch it the whole thing so like, we'll want to try and uh, help kids understand that but here's the fourth wall okay so we've created a topic All right so they can watch it in their web browser if they have internet what I wanted to do next is show what it means to have an assignment or a, a quiz that if you click quiz assignment and you say you title it whatever you want cars are cool uh, click on the quiz below. Uh, all the assignment stuff is, is there. Uh, the topic, this is going to be a lesson one topic. And we click on a blank quiz, or you could have already pre-created one. Uh, you just need to go up here to add and go to Google Drive and get it. But I like to just start with this 
quiz that's already attached to Google Classroom, and it will generate a new quiz for me one of these days. And you need to know you got to name it. Oh, oh, Google Drive is erroring, probably because I'm messing with it. Uh, I promise that that usually works fine. Uh, we got to name it up here, and we're going to name it Cars Quiz, and Cars Quiz. I, I don't know why it doesn't do them both on this. I've done that where sometimes if you name it here, it, it does, but for some reason times it doesn't. Don't worry about it. Uh, I want to title a question, and uh, all these deals here I'm going to do on a separate video, so I'm uh, just showing you how to add this quiz and if you go back here uh, and you click assign it should change that blank quiz to cars quiz and if I click on lesson one it's got cars quiz is there so uh, and now I can go back here and that's what I'll show you how to build a quiz from there Hope you're not too bored with seeing me. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now we'll take a look at making a quiz. There's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, I can say, uh, who is Light Lightning McQueen? Named after. And... Uh, you could have short answer, but it's hard to do an answer key because it's going to, uh, but you can do it where there's an answer key or there's not an answer key. You can require this question. Uh, you can change it to a long answer, multiple choice, uh, and then you click on the option and name it. So you'd say, uh, uh, a friend of Pixar uh, who uh, passed away. That's actually who it was named after. His guy, the guy's name was McQueen. Uh, but then you want to add another one here. And so you want to say, uh, uh, a 70s hairband. Uh, sorry, the Queen fans. Uh, who liked hamburgers. And then we want to go to the answer key, and it'd be like, well, which one is it? And it's like, well, it's a friend of Pixar who passed away. And we want to say that it's worth one point. Done. And you can mess with this and change it all you want, but I make sure I've got the required uh, and all that stuff right. And I click duplicate, and it builds the same question, and I can just name it, go through it, change it, change the answer key, pick the right one, make sure the points are already established, and I click done, and now my quiz is, is complete. I don't need to hit send because it's already saved on this lesson. If I click, if I close out of that and click on cars quiz, it's going to bring it up, and it's that's what my students will see when I hit submit. And uh, this is already open, so my kids can answer it, which the last thing I'm gonna do is show you how to schedule an assignment or a quiz so that you can tell people when it's going to be done. And then I'll let you be. All right, for the last video, I wanted to show you how to reproduce things and say you didn't like that you created this and you, you wanted to schedule it instead of just have it out there. So here's what I do. There might be a way that's faster, but I want to have that quiz, but I don't want everybody to have it. So I go to create and I go to reuse post. And under reuse post, you're gonna see all your Google Classrooms that you've ever created that are still open. And I'm gonna click on this one, which I called English 4. And I'm gonna click on Cars Are Cool. I wanna reuse this post. And what it's gonna do is generate the whole thing over again, but make it so I can adjust some things. So it's thinking, it's reusing it. And uh, I'll be patient here. It went a lot faster when I practiced it a second ago. So where you can schedule something is un up here under Assign. And it's like, oh, I hit Publish. I didn't want them to have it. I click Schedule and say, I want it to go out this Friday at 
8 a.m. And I can do this for each one. So I'm going to hit schedule. And every all the kids can take it at 8 a.m. Or uh, I can go back and change the schedule. If I wanted to change everything uh, to where it was only per class and not everybody, I'd just have to go in for each class and uh, reschedule it. So there's a way to fix things. And then I can go down to uh, this other cars is cool, and I can just delete it and say goodbye. And it's still all tied back to my cars quiz. And by the way, you've been watching me, laughing at me. I'm going up and hitting click. Look what I learned. Bye. Hey, good to see you, buddy. Uh, well, you see me. I don't see you. I'm happy to make this video. I hope it's helpful. And we'll move quick here. If you go down, if you you need to use QuickTime is what I used. Um, we might be able to use Zoom, but this was simple for me. That uh, I went to Finder and I typed in QuickTime. And after I typed in QuickTime, I double clicked QuickTime Player, and that's what made it pop up down here. This Q looks like a power button, and it's a Q. And when you have QuickTime Player open, you go up to uh, file, you have to be all open, and you won't have this video up here, it won't be up there. Uh, you will have to go to view, no, file. You go to file and you want to click new movie recording. Okay, that's going to bring up what I have here. That's a video that I'm watching myself, right? So you do a new movie recording and it pops you up. But then you have to go to view and you click float on top. That's going to give you a screen. It's going to be full sized. All right, it's going to be full sized. And then you can just use your arrow like this to make it any size you want. It, it gets, this is about as small as I can get it. So that they can see my eyes when I'm talking and feel the interaction while I screencast. That's my goal. Next, uh, you go to File, and, it, and it's all that you'll see yourself in the corner. And you go down to New Screen Recording. Now, this is something I can't reproduce right now, so you'll just have to trust me. That I clicked on New Screen Recording. Uh, hey, there's you replying to me in an email. You click New Screen Recording, and uh, it'll pop up another little thing with a with a power button in the middle. Don't click Record yet. Don't click record yet. What you have to do is there's a little drop arrow next to it and you need to click on that drop arrow and then click on microphone, your internal microphone. Then after you click internal microphone, then you can click anywhere on the screen. Don't, there's like, there's, you. oh wait, you click the red button, sorry, click the red button and then you click on anywhere on your screen to screencast. So you click the red button after you've turned on your microphone and then click anywhere on your screen. It'll say something like click on the screen to screencast. And so I started screencasting and it's recording me talking. Now I would do this and then when I'm done, go down to QuickTime, this is kind of weird, and you two finger touch and you can click stop screen recording. I would do it quick and then when you do that, it brings up your old device, or it brings up delete. Do you want to delete it or not? You're like, no, I want to. I want to press play. I want to listen to it first, and you can see whether you are actually talking, and uh, and if you can actually hear yourself. Now you get done, and you want to see maybe everything went great, and you re re redo all these steps after watching this and pressing pause. You get done and you want to save it you're going to you're going to go down here and click uh two finger touch and click stop screen recording it's going to ask you to save and save name it whatever you want to name it and see where you're saving it at so you can find it but name it something normal like a uh, uh, powerpoint lecture 320 you know the date and after you're done then you need to bring up your youtube account all right and your YouTube account, 
Now I've got all this stuff on here. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to live cast, and I don't have the software to do it. So, uh, but if you go to YouTube, and you can do this through your own account, and those there's those nine buttons up here to go to YouTube, right here. One of those. Uh, this is never mind. I'll be confusing you. There's this arrow plus icon. What you do is you go to upload video. We don't have the software to go live right now on our computers. They've changed all that. It's been really frustrating because I used to be able to screencast really easy. Uh, but when I click on this and say, I want to take that file that I named PowerPoint 320, I can drag it and drop it uh, right here. And depending on your speed, uh, depending on your speed, uh, where's the video? Uh, yeah, here we go. I could drag and drop this here. And, oh, it says I'm currently signed out. So it's that easy. Drag and drop it. And then uh, you'll need to publish it on YouTube. And if you need help with that, this is getting long. At least now you know how to screencast. I can help you with this later. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do two finger click and click stop recording and send this to you. Do this, drop it, and send it to you.